Hello, everyone. Welcome to Business School 101. China has been the largest foreign market for Apple for years. In 2020, Apple's revenue in China hit 261.95 billion Chinese yuan, which is about 40.3 billion US dollars. Under this scenario, if the Chinese yuan depreciates 1% against the US dollar, Apple's revenue in China will lose around 403 million US dollars. Therefore, the foreign exchange market is critical for Apple's performance. Due to the increasing impact of globalization, the foreign exchange market is becoming more and more important not only to the big companies like Apple, Boeing, and Ford, whose revenue heavily relies on the foreign markets, but also to many individual investors, consumers, and international travelers. So what is the foreign exchange market? What are its major functions and features? In this video, I will answer these questions for you. The foreign exchange market is a market for converting the currency of one country into that of another country. An exchange rate is simply the rate at which one currency is converted into another. For example, Tesla uses the foreign exchange market to convert Chinese yuan it earns from selling its electric vehicles in China into US dollars. Without the foreign exchange market, international trade and international investment on the scale that we see today would be impossible. The foreign exchange market is the lubricant that enables companies based in countries that use different currencies to trade with each other. The foreign exchange market serves two main functions. The first is to convert the currency of one country into the currency of another. The second is to provide some insurance against foreign exchange risk or the adverse consequences of unpredictable changes in exchange rates. So let's discuss these in detail. First, currency conversion. Each country has a currency in which the price of its goods and services are quoted. In the United States, it is the dollar. In Great Britain, the pound. In France, Germany, and other members of the Eurozone, it is the euro. In China, the yuan, and so on. In general, within the borders of a particular country, one must use the national currency. For example, a U.S. tourist cannot walk into a local shopping mall in Japan and use U.S. dollars. The tourist must use the Japanese yen. Fortunately, the tourist can go to a bank and exchange their dollars for yen. Then they can shop in the mall. Individual tourists, consumers, or investors are only minor participants in the foreign exchange market. Major players are companies that are engaged in international trade and investment. International businesses have four main uses of foreign exchange markets. Number one, payment received from foreign customers. The payments a company receives for its exports, the income it receives from foreign investments, or the income it receives from licensing agreements with foreign firms may be in foreign currencies. Number two, payment made for foreign suppliers. International businesses use foreign exchange markets when they must pay a foreign company for its products or services in its country's currency. For example, Walmart buys many products from China. The Chinese companies must be paid in Chinese yuan, so Walmart must convert their dollars into yuan to pay them. Number 3. Investment for foreign countries International businesses also use foreign exchange markets when they have spare cash that they wish to invest for short terms in money markets. For example, consider a U.S. company that has $10 million and it wants to invest for three months. The best interest rate it can earn on those funds in the United States may be 2%. However, investing in a South Korean money market account may earn 10%. The company may change its $10 million U.S. dollars into Korean won and invest it in South Korea to earn the extra 8% interest. Number 4. Currency Speculation Currency speculation typically involves the short-term movement of funds from one currency to another in the hopes of profiting from shifts in exchange rates. Consider again a U.S. company with $10 million to invest for three months. The company expects the value of the dollar to depreciate against that of the yen. Imagine the current dollar to yen exchange rate is 1 U.S. dollar to 120 yen. The company exchanges its 10 million U.S. dollars into yen receiving 1.2 billion yen. Over the next three months, the value of the dollar depreciates against the yen until one US dollar is equal to 100 yen. Now the company exchanges its 1.2 billion Japanese yen back into dollars 
and finds that it has 12 million US dollars. Therefore, the company has made a $2 million profit on currency speculation in three months on an initial investment of $10 million. Although the example about currency speculation is very impressive, companies should be aware, for speculation by definition is a very risky business. The company cannot know for sure what will happen to exchange rates. While a speculator may profit handsomely if their speculation about future currency movements turns out to be correct, they can also lose vast amounts of money if it turns out to be wrong. A second function of the foreign exchange market is insuring against foreign exchange risk, which is the possibility that unpredicted changes in future exchange rates will have adverse consequences for the firm. When a firm insures itself against foreign exchange risk, it is engaging in hedging. To explain how the market performs this function, we must understand the differences among spot exchange rates, foreign exchange rates, and currency swaps. First, spot exchange rates. When two parties agree to exchange currency and execute the deal immediately, the transaction is referred to as a spot exchange. Exchange rates governing such on-the-spot trades are referred to as spot exchange rates. The spot exchange rate is the rate at which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency into another currency on any particular day. Thus, when our U.S. tourist in Edinburgh goes to a bank to convert their dollars into pounds, the exchange rate is the spot rate for that day. Spot rates change continually, often on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. The value of a currency is determined by the interaction between the supply and demand of that currency relative to the supply and demand of other currencies. For example, if lots of people want U.S. dollars and dollars are in short supply, and few people want British pounds, and pounds are in plentiful supply, the spot exchange rate for converting dollars into pounds will change. The dollar is likely to appreciate against the pound, or the pound will depreciate against the dollar. Second, forward exchange rates. Changes in spot exchange rates can be problematic for an international business. For example, a U.S. company that imports laptop computers from Japan knows that in 30 days it must pay yen to a Japanese supplier when a shipment arrives. The company will pay the Japanese supplier 200,000 yen for each laptop computer, and the current dollar to yen spot exchange rate is $1 to 120 yen. At this rate, each computer costs the importer $1,667. The importer knows that they can sell the computers the day they arrive for $2,000 each which yields a gross profit of $333 on each computer. However, the importer will not have the funds to pay the Japanese supplier until the computers have been sold. If over the next 30 days, the dollar unexpectedly depreciates against the yen, let's just say one US dollar to 95 yen, the importer will still have to pay Japanese company 200,000 yen per computer, but in dollar terms, that would be equivalent to $2,105 per computer, which is more than they can sell the computers for. A depreciation in the value of the dollar against the yen, like this, would transform a profitable deal into an unprofitable one. To ensure or hedge against this risk, the U.S. importer might want to engage in a forward exchange. A forward exchange occurs when two parties agree to exchange currency and execute the deal at some specific date in the future. Exchange rates governing such future transactions are referred to as forward exchange rates. For most major currencies, forward exchange rates are quoted for 30 days, 90 days, or 180 days into the future. In some cases, it is possible to get forward exchange rates for several years into the future. Returning to our example of the computer importer, let us assume the 30-day forward exchange rate for converting dollars into yen is $1 to 110 yen. The importer enters into a 30-day forward exchange transaction with a foreign exchange dealer at this rate and is guaranteed that they will have to pay no more than $1,818 for each computer. This guarantees a profit of $182 per computer. This also ensures them against the possibility that an unanticipated change in the dollar to yen exchange rate will turn a profitable deal into an unprofitable one. This discussion of spot and forward exchange rates might lead you to conclude that the option to buy forward is very important to companies engaged in international trade, and you would be right. According to the most recent data, forward instruments 
accounted for almost two-thirds of all foreign exchange transactions, while spot exchanges accounted for about one-third. However, the vast majority of these forward exchanges were not forward exchanges of the type we have been discussing, but rather a more sophisticated instrument known as currency swaps. A currency swap is the simultaneous purchase and sale of a given amount of foreign exchange for two different value dates. Swaps are transacted between international businesses and their banks, between banks, and between governments when it is desirable to move out of one currency into another for a limited period without incurring foreign exchange risk. A common kind of swap is spot against forward. Consider a company such as Apple. Apple assembles laptop computers in the United States, but the screens are made in Japan. Apple also sells some of the finished laptops in Japan. So, like many companies, Apple both buys from and sells to Japan. Imagine Apple needs to change $1 million into yen to pay its supplier of laptop screens today. Apple knows that in 90 days it will be paid 120 million yen by the Japanese importer that buys its finished laptops. It will want to convert these yen into dollars for use in the United States. Let us say today's spot exchange rate is $1 to 120 yen, and the 90-day forward exchange rate is $1 to 110 yen. Apple sells $1 million to its bank in return for 120 million yen. Now Apple can pay its Japanese supplier. At the same time, Apple enters into a 90-day forward exchange deal with its bank for converting 120 million yen into dollars. Thus, in 90 days, Apple will receive $1.9 million. Since yen is trading at a premium on the 90-day forward market, Apple ends up with more dollars than it started with. The swap deal is just like the conventional forward deal with one important difference. It enables Apple to insure itself against foreign exchange risk. By engaging in a swap, Apple knows that today the 120 million yen payment it will receive in 90 days will yield $1.9 million. There are two major features of the global foreign exchange market. First, the market never sleeps. The foreign exchange market is not located in any one place. It is a global network of banks, brokers, and currently the most important trading centers in the world are London, New York, Zurich, Tokyo, and Singapore. London, New York, and Tokyo are all shut for only three hours out of every 24 hours. During these three hours, trading continues in a number of minor centers particularly San Francisco and Sydney. In addition, the global exchange market is the integration of the various trading centers. High-speed computer links between trading centers around the globe have effectively created a single market. The integration of financial centers implies there can be no significant difference in exchange rates quoted in the trading centers. Second, the important role of the U.S. dollar. Although a foreign exchange transaction can involve any two currencies, most transactions involve dollars on one side. This is true even when a dealer wants to sell a non-dollar currency and buy another. For example, a dealer wishing to sell Indian rupees for Brazilian real will usually sell the rupee for dollars and then use the dollars to buy real. Although this may seem a roundabout way of doing things, it is actually cheaper than trying to find a holder of real who wants to buy rupee. Because the volume of international transactions involving dollars is so great, it is not hard to find dealers who wish to trade dollars for rupee or real. Due to its central role in so many foreign exchange deals, the dollar is a vehicle currency. Currently, over 85% of all foreign exchange transactions involve dollars on one side of the transaction. Central banks around the world hold about 60% of their foreign exchange reserves in dollars. After the dollar, the most important currencies are the European Euro, the Japanese Yen, the British Pound, and the Chinese Yuan, reflecting the importance of these trading entities in the world economy. Alright, that's it for the first part of the foreign exchange market. In the second part, we will continue to discuss the foreign exchange market and introduce the economic theories of exchange rate determination. So if you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.